Hello again, everyone. It's great seeing you again, and thanks for joining us for Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather on this uh, 28th day of October 2018. Up first on the hazardous weather graphic, uh, winter weather advisory here continues for the southeastern Brooks Range, and that continues until midnight tonight uh, for another one to three inches of snow to fall. Maybe some locations could get up as locally to five inches, five more inches. That should start tapering off after midnight when the advisory is due to end. And uh, for places like Arctic Village, uh, Weissman, Coldfoot, Chandelier Lake, and Dot Camp. And uh, Coldfoot today, in the 12 hour period ended at 3 p.m., picked up uh, three to four inches of snow. So the uh, some areas there are seeing up around that five inch mark or five inches of snow there. Otherwise, lighter amounts in other areas. And moving on to satellite imagery, you can see a very slow moving cold front from the eastern Arctic coast, actually down into uh, the Kenai Peninsula here. Got southerly flow ahead of that and precipitation heaviest over the eastern Kenai Peninsula from Seward on up into western Prince William Sound northward uh, through the Eagle River area into the Madnuska Valley and then much lighter amounts back to the west cuts off here toward the Alaska Range. Clearing skies, colder temperatures out here over the western and southwest interior to Bristol Bay. Northwest winds kicking up now across uh, southwestern Kodiak Island. Bristol Bay and the uh, eastern Alaska Peninsula and Aleutian Range. And then up here in the Bering Sea and the northern Bering Sea, westerly flow pushing the next system and snow back into St. Lawrence Island this afternoon. A little bit of an increase in the wind, but nothing too terribly serious. Otherwise, in advance of this uh, upper level trough, axis of which is right through here, just about along with the cold front, got uh, moisture flowing northward again, bringing uh, some of those uh, heavier amounts of snow, three to five inches uh, today on the southern slopes of the southeastern Brooks Range. Some of that all the way out to the Arctic coast, much lighter amounts though. And we have a band of moisture here that brought a little bit of light rain today to both Atka and Adak, that kind of the remnants of uh, some moisture dropping down from the north and then a system down here to the south circulate a little bit up and uh, right in over the central Aleutians, but that'll be ending shortly. And mostly cloudy skies here, otherwise over the southeast bearing, but it looked like some clearing showing up out towards Shimia there uh, with high pressure generally controlling the weather right here over the southern Bering Sea. And that'll continue uh, at least through tomorrow. Panhandle, uh, front moved into the southern areas today and that brought about a third of an inch of rain to both Ketchikan and Annette with lighter amounts up to the north and again some areas didn't see any at all but mostly cloudy skies all the way over to Yakutat kind of a band of mid and high level clouds there and then the Kenai Peninsula here uh, Seward picking up about nine tenths of an inch of precipitation during the day today and then a mixture of rain or snow northward in across Alyeska had about four tenths of an inch, all of which, of course, fell as snow at the mountaintop there, and uh, four to six tenths of an inch falling across uh, the uh, Turnigan Arm area on up into Eagle River and uh, the Manuska Valley with that band up along the cold front there in the eastern interior and kind of becomes a little more widespread there from the northern Koyukuk Valley, kind of some lighter amounts of snow swinging east-southeastward there in the back side of this low in across the Battles area and then the heaviest amounts on the eastern Brooks Range south side but uh, some light snow all the way to the Arctic coast that becomes more showery with lighter flurries back to the west and the system coming across the uh, northern Bering just exiting the Russian Far East there bringing the light snow ahead of the warm front into St. Lawrence Island this system will kind of start tracking off to the southeast here, so the clear skies will become cloudy at night and increasing chances of moisture as that happens. Otherwise, just isolated showers for the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, otherwise, uh, we had, let's see, winds kicking up 30 to as high as 50 miles per hour here for the uh, Alaska Peninsula areas, Sitkanak over toward Yotini Bay, and uh, cold bay seeing gusts 30, 35 miles an hour out of the northwest and some of that uh, wind also into the uh, Iliamna Kamishak Bay area and increase in cross Kodiak. Akiak seeing gusts 35 miles an hour to the northwest, even higher at Sitkanak. And kind of a gradient now right up the Alaska Range, so a little breezy through the passes that uh, Arctic air seeps eastward into the areas east of the Alaska Range. 
Otherwise, high pressure here controlling the southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians, except for this little bit of moisture here that snuck in from the south uh, and the light rain associated with it. For tonight, we'll see that uh, front washes out here, kind of just left of the trough, farther <coughs> swings up across the Queen Charlotte's, but chance of rain will continue over the southern southeast coast with uh, even a chance up into the central panhandle, otherwise dries out here over the southeast interior of the Wrangell Mountains and most of precipitation now off the coastline, except up this uh, trough axis. It looks like a surge of moisture will roll up this boundary here and uh, keep the rain and snow going over the coastal areas of the Kenai Peninsula with mostly snow as the colder air gets in to uh, northern Cook Inlet, especially Turnigan Arm, Alieska. A uh, pretty good chance of snow overnight tonight on up into Eagle River and the Matanuska Valley. Much lighter amounts in the Susitna Valley, if anything at all. Looks like most of the moisture will be just to the east of the Susitna Valley or into the mountains there. On up into the 40 Mile Country, a break and then more snow again. The snow advisory ending after midnight or by midnight there for the southeastern Brooks Range. But light snow continues for the North Slope and Arctic Coast and this system drops a uh, chance of snow into the Yukon-Kuskokwim Delta with a uh, chance of rain or snow reaching the Pribilof Islands late tonight. High pressure holds over the southern Bering and the Aleutians and clears out with uh, kind of breezy for Kodiak Island, but no real strong winds. We'll see for forecasts for tomorrow, those winds will begin to diminish, especially in the afternoon there, with pretty nice conditions, partly sunny skies, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, or uh, the Kodiak Island area northward, and uh, even more widespread clearing up here with colder temperatures in the north. Flurries continue on the Arctic coast, but amounts will be light. This slow-moving system edging southeastward, rain or snow ahead of the frontal boundaries there and behind the warm front into the northwestern part of Bristol Bay with mostly snow for the Yukon Delta ending over St. Lawrence Island and just grazing the south coast of the Seward Peninsula. Chance of rain for the Pribilof stays dry over the Aleutians and Snow chances pretty good here up toward Valdez and uh, rain or snow for the North Gulf Coast. Isolated showers now down over the southern panhandle. Outlook for Tuesday. This system to the south keeps a chance of rain and over the southern southeast coast when amounts will be light, scattering out the showers in the north. Much drier here over southern Alaska and chillier, partly sunny Kodiak there. Really not much of uh, wind at all here, very uh, flat gradient and chilly over the interior. Snow persisting up here from about the White Mountains up across the upper Yukon River, Porcupine River areas to uh, possibly Arctic Village, but dry back to the west with partial clearing. Isolated flurries here, Nolato Hills, uh, maybe uh, White Mountain, and isolated rain or snow showers possible here over Bristol Bay. Next system sliding northeastward, so snow becoming rain and snow push into the St. Lawrence Island area. And for the lows tonight, uh, single numbers to maybe as low as five below there uh, for the Brooks Range. 10 to 15 eastern Arctic coast. Lows in the mid-20s here. Yukon Kuskokwim Delta to mid-30s for Nunavak Island, Perbloffs, and the Bering Sea to near 40 for the Aleutians. Lows upper 30s or mid-30s to lower 40s for the southeast coast. Much colder air now into south central Alaska. Lows anywhere from 20 to 25, uh, maybe even a little chillier with the highs tomorrow looking like this. Highs 30 to 35, lower to mid 30 south central Alaska, 45 to 50 for the Panhandle, near 20 in the Tanaha Valley, some areas a little warmer than that, but single numbers for the central Brooks Range into the north slope, then teens east side of the coast to 20s on the west side, 35 to 42 for the southwest interior. Lows the following morning, chillier, 10 to 15 below there for the Brooks Range into the North Slope, near zero eastern Arctic coast, a little milder to the west, 30s to lower 40s for the Panhandle, and then your highs, 30 to 35 for South Central Alaska, and single numbers for the Brooks Range. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic showing uh, quite a swath of IFR here from the northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island into the Yukon and uh, part of the Kuskokwim Delta. Marginal VFR becomes VFR for the central Aleutians here to Fox Island, much of the Alaska Peninsula Kodiak, and northward here to the central interior, back to IFR along all the Arctic coast. Marginal VFR here, uh, kind of persistent band of moisture right through here, so IFR 
least a start for Western Prince William Sound, Southern Panhandle tomorrow afternoon. Improving here, uh, southeast part of the Copper River Basin into the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast in the IFR zone, southern Panhandle, see some IFR, and then that system coming in across the Bering Sea on that westerly flow, IFR well inland here into the Cuscombe Valley and uh, Norton Sound, southern Seward Peninsula, also the central eastern Arctic coast. And for Tuesday morning, that moves right up to the Alaska Range with some marginal VFR spilling over into western Cook Inlet as well as Shelikoff Strait. Uh, pretty marginal now, southern Bering Sea in the Aleutians. And uh, some more IFR just edging in toward Hattu Island. Otherwise, good VFR. Looks like much of the Arctic coast, North Slope, Brooks Range, into the upper Yukon Valley, then southward. VFR day, at least in the morning there for uh, Susitna Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula. IFR from the Wrangell Mountains on down across the northern half or so of the southeast coast. And for Tuesday afternoon, that uh, IFR retreats down to the southern areas there with uh, marginal or VFR conditions for the remainder of the panhandle. And this area holding along and west of the Alaska Range there, so the western slopes looking IFR, otherwise VFR, Kodiak Island, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound here, right on up. Uh, and in fact, looks like northern half of the state will be VFR. IFR along the Yukon Delta coast here to Nunavik Island, St. Lawrence Island, Marginal for the Pribilofs and the Southern Bering Sea to the Aleutians. Passes both Anatovic and Anagan tomorrow and uh, probably Tuesday as well. VFR conditions and Lake Clark and Merrill VFR. Rainy VFR as well. Windy, same forecast VFR. But uh, Isabel here, that uh, band of moisture kind of holding stationary mostly near and to the west there, but to the east of Windy Pass. Mintasta, occasionally marginal as well. And for Tanita, again, marginal VFR uh, persisting throughout the day. And for Portage, starting on IFR, may improve to uh, marginal VFR in the afternoon. Anyway, it looks like the lowest conditions will occur early on and then some gradual improvement. And for Chilkoot and White, uh, marginal VFR trending toward IFR possibly as that band of moisture lifts northward late in the afternoon. And for freezing levels, Two to 4,000 feet here from uh, roughly the Kenai Peninsula eastward into the northern panhandle. Otherwise at the surface tomorrow morning, all of interior Alaska and roughly about 2,000 feet out here over the Bering Sea on down to the Aleutians. Icing, that system coming in or the moisture could be uh, isolated moderate rime icing um, here in this shaded area, slowly moving eastward and edging down toward the Pervilof Islands and proving back toward St. Lawrence Island, staying south of the Seward Peninsula. Could be some <clears throat> considerable moderate rime icing here along the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast into northeast Prince William Sound, otherwise uh, much lighter into the Panhandle and then back to the northwest. Jet stream, upper level low tomorrow, or trough here near Kodiak Island, uh, and then another one up there over the eastern Arctic coast. So generally a cold trough here over the northern Bering Sea. Westerly flow 60, 70 knots across the Bering, carrying that system into the west coast. Stronger jet well to the south here, 150 knots, but uh, not even affecting the Panhandle or the Aleutians. And for 9,000 feet, uh, upper trough here, westerly 25, eastern Arctic coast, pretty brisk, uh, 25 to 35 here from the western Alaska Range, northeast Bristol Bay down across Kodiak. Much lighter uh, winds here over the Aleutians, but westerlies, 30 to 40 knots across the Bering Sea. And at 3,000 feet, uh, same thing, 30, 35 knots across the Bering, much lighter here over interior Alaska, especially in the northern half with uh, high pressure and then some 20 to 40 knot winds here coming down from the Western Alaska Range, Kamshak Bay, Kodiak Island, the Barrens there, and then southeast, 25 on the Eastern North Gulf Coast and off the Panhandle. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop, Kodiak Island, Kamshak Bay, as well as areas of the Southwest interior. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining us once again is Eric Stevens, our good friend from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska, based up at UAF. And thanks for joining us, Eric. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here, Dave. And we love to hear about all the fascinating developments, and new and old, and how the, we're using the tools here, especially around Alaska. 
And mm -hmm. I've got to think that, you know, satellite meteorology right now is a, a fascinating time to be involved in. If we go back to the first satellite, uh, Tyros, back in 1960, I think is when we got some of those first pictures, uh, weather and meteorology probably changed that day for a whole lot of people, and it's mm -hmm. still changing today, right? Oh, you know it. Satellite imagery is so important, and it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Of course, never perfect, but especially for us in Alaska, where there are other data sets like radars and mm -hmm. weather balloons are so thinly spread. Right. The satellite is the great equalizer because the satellite sees everything. Right. Yeah. Right. We've got one particular um, issue in volcanic ash detection. That's a big deal here. Yeah. You know it. If you fly an airplane into volcanic ash, uh, your jet engine might just fail. And, right. and an airplane without engines is in a world of hurt. Sure. So if there's a volcano that goes off, Satellite imagery is the way to track that plume of ash mm -hmm. and to tell pilots this is where you need to not be right. to avoid this ash plume. And uh, there's a, a phrase out there, what's the difference? What's you know, the what's difference? the difference? Okay. Well, it turns out, what we're going to discuss today, that the difference is everything. There's a technique called channel differencing. Okay. That if you take one piece of the spectrum of what the satellite detects, and a slightly different wavelength of that spectrum, even though those two images might look similar, magical things happen when you subtract one from the other. Huh. And they reveal information that was already there, but it was hard to find until you did that subtraction. That sounds like Nicolas Cage in National Treasure when he's got those fancy glasses <laughs> and he's flipping one up and back and forth. I mean, is this what we're talking about? Look, look. Let's go more highbrow and talk okay. Michelangelo. Oh, so apparently okay. Michelangelo <laughs> made some amazing sculpture yeah. and someone said, Michael, that's amazing. How did you do it? Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo's reply uh, allegedly was, well, you know, in that rock, the statue was already in there. Right. I just scraped away the unnecessary bits. In satellite meteorology, yeah. sometimes there are meteorological features that are in the data, but you can't see it until you combine or difference some of the channels. Okay. And we've got a case, good old uh, Pavlov volcano right. goes off now and then. Sure. And uh, you can observe directly uh, a picture of the volcano, you know, just take it with your iPhone, yeah. you can see a volcano going erupting. off. Yep. Right. But if you want to get the broad view, we need satellite mm -hmm. to do that. Now, there are a couple of wavelengths that we can look at. Wave. So what's a wavelength? Well, that's, a wavelength. The, yeah. that's the amount of space between a peak and a valley and another peak uh, in a certain part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to look at 12 micron wavelength wow. and 10.8 micron wavelength. What is a micron? So what's a micron? Yeah, we're getting into the geek department now. <laughs> micron is a unit of length and it is quite tiny. We're looking at what's called long wave uh, wavelengths, okay. but it takes 25,000 of these microns to make an inch. Yeah. A human Whoa. blood cell is about five microns across. So when we're talking about 12 micron imagery as allegedly long wave, well, that's relative. Pretty too. short for light. Yeah, yeah. it's other part okay. of the, uh, it's, it's just a, an expression for the, the spectrum there. Okay. So we can look at a, at a 12 micron image, say a satellite image. At 12 microns, we're seeing a heat signature here, really. And, and the way this color enhancement works is the, the yellow and the red stuff is, is high cold clouds down mm -hmm. here over the Gulf of Alaska into South Central. And if you were set, you were asked, where do you find the uh, volcanic ash plume in this image? Hey, where do you find the volcanic plume in this image? Eric? It's hard to do. I'm yeah. not sure I could find it. If you, <laughs> if you were to look at this image and just say, show me the, what, you, what jumps out at you here, I'd say, well, nothing really. Well, let's okay. look. So a 12 micron doesn't help us. Let's okay. look at 10.8 microns. All right. All right. Look at that. It's practically the same image. So mm. where's this volcanic ash? Can't find it at 12 microns, can't really see it at, at 10.8. Mm -hmm. But when we take, subtract one channel from the other, oh. magically, the huh. plume appears. The color enhancement here yeah. uh, highlights the ash in blue. Wow. The data, the information was already there, but we couldn't find it until we subtracted one channel from another. Very it's, interesting. It's almost magical. Similarly, let's say you're looking for fog up on the north slope. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a foggy neighborhood. Sure. Um, in 11 micron and 3.9 micron, we've got a 3.9 micron image here. Um, it's a big fuzzy blur over Barrow. Mm -hmm. we, we can't see where the fog is. But the information is lurking in there waiting for us to, to reveal it. All we have to do is find that difference between the 11 micron and the 3.9, and then this image huh. becomes this image, and the fog bank jumps right out, and you can see it up there at Barrow. 
Now, every you got to choose the right tool for the job. Sure. Like they say, you open your right. toolbox, all kinds of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. What do we need for this particular task? If you want to find volcanic ash, we look at 12 and 10.8 micron, find that difference. If you want to find that. fog, we'll look at 11 and 3.9 micron, find that difference. It's great, different tools for different jobs. Of course, there's always caveats and gotchas, but this fog <laughs> procedure, yeah. it only works at night, because when the sun oh. comes up, it, it gets in the way. Um, so oh. every product has its strengths and limitations, and in meteorology, the challenge is using the right tool for the right job, and these are some of those tools. And discovery is still happening, even with meteorology. The weather's been around for a long time, but the yeah. tools that are being developed to understand the meteorology is a fascinating and still very new science. It's, a, it's such a young science. We've come so far. I'm getting old enough now that I can literally <laughs> say that, you know, when I was a boy, we didn't have this kind of thing. Yeah. And, and there's new things happening all the time. New satellites will be launched in coming years that will have better instruments than ever before. It's an exciting time, and this is so helpful for Alaska because satellites mm -hmm. help fill in the gaps between other ways observe, of the, observing the weather. Satellites are the great equalizer for Alaska. Yeah, and help so many people stay safe in so many ways every you know day it. up here in the last frontier. Yeah, it's what it's all about, protecting lives and property. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, Eric. We love to hear about this fascinating information, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, it just makes me want to go watch satellite pictures all day. So <laughs> hopefully sure we're inspiring more people to do the same thing, and uh, just be curious. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. See, I analysis today, uh, all white now here along the east side, central Arctic coast eastward there, except for that spot northeast of uh, Kektovik. And uh, again, continues to fill in from north and northeast to south and southwest here. And uh, also some ice showing up a little bit more now on the west side of the Arctic coast there, and also along the coast of the Russian Far East. And for the coastal water forecast, southwest 20 on the south coast, seas 12 feet. Small craft advisory, southwest 25, and then east 25 here for the north coast, 9 to 10 foot seas there. Stevens Passage, Lynn Canal, southeast at 10 and 20 knots for Clarence Strait. That continues, no change for Tuesday for Clarence Strait, south 15 on the south coast, otherwise southwest at 20 for the remainder of the coastline with 8 to 10 foot seas. Small craft advisories for the Lynn Canal, south 25, five foot seas. And for Prince William Sound, we've got east winds in the forecast tomorrow at 20 knots with four foot seas. Small craft advisories here for the North Gulf Coast, east side out of the south and the west side, westerlies. Gale warnings for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay, northwest 35 knots, seas as high as 16 feet. Cook Inlet, north winds at 20 with three, four to five foot seas. And then for Tuesday, for Cook Inlet, northwest, lighter, 10 knots, seas a little less, 2 to 3 feet. West winds 15 for Kamishak Bay, small craft advisories for the Barrens and the western North Gulf Coast. West northwest, 25, seas 8 feet, eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, northwest at 20, and light northerlies for Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island tomorrow from Shelikoff Strait to on across the island, northwest, 25, 7 to 9 foot seas. Hold on to some gales here from Sitkanak to Castle Cape for northwest 35 and 11 foot seas. Otherwise, north to northwest for the peninsula at 20 knots and Bristol Bay west 20. Then for uh, Tuesday, no change. West winds 20 knots for Bristol Bay, northwest 15. Bering Sea side of the peninsula, Pacific side northeast at 20. And uh, then 15 knot winds on up to Sitkanak, west northwest 15 for Kodiak Island, seas 3 to 5 feet. And for the Fox Islands tomorrow, kind of a variable wind pattern in Alaska Island, call it northeast 10 to 20, 4 to 6 foot seas, and then variable for Windmack Island at 10 to 20. Central Aleutians northeast 10 to 20, 4 to 7 foot seas, and then easterlies for the far western zone there at 10 knots. Outlook for Tuesday, southerlies 15 to 20, western Aleutians, Adak and Atka northeast 10 to 20 knots, seas up to 8 feet. And small craft advisories here for the eastern Aleutians on the Pacific side of the islands and just 10 to 15 knots out of the northeast on the Bering Sea side. On the southwest coast, west winds 35 knots tomorrow, seas 10 to 11 feet. Small craft advisories for the Pribilof Islands, southwest 25, west 30 for St. Matthew Island, 
Swing it around to the east for St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound. Small craft advisories there, 25 to 30 knot winds. And uh, for Tuesday, those turn south at 25 for St. Lawrence Island, northeast 20 for Norton Sound. Southwesterlies, 25 knots for the southwest coast, seas 8 feet. 20 knots, 7 foot seas for the Permalofs and southwest 30 for St. Matthew Island. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast uh, tomorrow, northwest 15 to 20 knots. North at 10 knots there for the Barrow area, or the Central Coast, and South 10 on the west side. 15 knot winds here from uh, Cape Lisburn to Point Hope, and then south of there for the Chuck CC east at 20. And the outlook for Tuesday, Wales to Cape Thompson southeast, 20 knots. Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort south at 20. West side here, southeast 15, south 15 on the Central Coast, and pretty light winds, light and variable. 5 to 10 knots here for the eastern stretch of the coastline. For tonight, clearing and colder here over the western interior. Again, uh, some temperatures dropping down into the single numbers. Uh, a little breezy, definitely chillier for Kodiak Island. Snow continues, Kenai Peninsula, Turnigan Arm, Alieska, Girdwood, on up into Eagle River, Palmer area, and Jonesville Mine, and then angling off to the 40 mile country. And chance of rain over the southern panhandle. This system bringing more snow into the southwest coast. That slowly moves eastward here, but amounts won't be all that significant. Could see significant snow. Uh, Western Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula up through the Manuska Valley, and then begins to taper off tomorrow afternoon with colder temperatures holding in place here through Tuesday, but much drier chance of rain in the Panhandle, and the next system into the Bering Strait in the afternoon. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.